We're going to start in Yoga Mudrasan, Vajrasan. So Vajrasan is a kneading pose. The big toes are touching. The knees are slightly apart, but the thighs are parallel. Put the hands on the lower ribs and lift them up so you stretch the front spine. And then exhale and place yourselves with that length in your Yoga Mudrasan. Notice how I just have the fingertips on the floor for now. The palms are lifted, the arms are straight. And keeping the shoulders broad, bring the forehead to the floor. Begin in this position to observe the breath, the inhalation and the exhalation. As you stretch forward, push the buttock bones back and feel the sensations of the breath everywhere. And at the same time, notice any parts of the body that are not feeling sensation, that are feeling stuck, that are feeling tight. And often just in the noticing, these areas will start to release, to feel breath in them. Keep the shoulders broad, keep the trapezius muscles moving down away from the ears, so the sides of the neck stay long. And even though the body is becoming more alert, more stretched, more open, the face must become more and more passive, more soft. And now inhaling and looking up between the hands and slowly, gently coming out of your yoga mudrasan. So now for our next poses, we're going to need straps. Two straps. Our first pose will just need one strap, but have the second strap handy. And make sure that your straps have a nice big loop in them. Then go ahead and stretch the legs straight. We're going to be lying down in Supta Tadasan. Make sure your buttocks are moving towards your heels. And find the centrality of the mat. And just observe the left, the right. Keep the legs charged, the feet charged, the heels pressing down, the toes spread. And now take your first strap. Making sure there's that big loop, bend your right knee towards you. Put the whole strap around the leg. So it's going to be right in the root of the thigh. And then your left foot is going to take the excess strap and extend the strap out as you extend the left leg. And now interlock your fingers around the front of the right kneecap and we find Ekapara Sutta Padanamukkasan. But with the use of the strap, we can really feel the right hip being pulled open. So use your left foot to push the strap until you feel the outside edge of the right hip lengthening towards the left foot. And in this way, the right lower back will also begin to have more broadness and more length. It won't tighten up as you bend the knee towards you. So observe the sides of the back, the left back, the right back on the mat, how they feel, and try to find an equal sensation of evenness between both of them. And now releasing, we're going to change sides. So your right foot is going to hold the strap and your left leg, the root of the left leg, is going to hold the rest of the strap. And then interlock your fingers around the front of the left kneecap and use the right foot to push into the strap so that the outside edge of your left hip begins to feel the tension of the strap. And with that action, you can roll it towards the right foot. Go with the mind to the lower back, to the left lower back, to the right lower back, and see if you can make an even sensation of broadness on the mat. Keep the face quiet and passive, the shoulders back, the chest open. Just gently allowing the sacroiliacs, the hips, the lower back to feel themselves in a new way. And now releasing, changing sides again. So the left foot will push the strap and the right leg will hold the strap at the groin of the leg. And now take your second strap and make a little loop with your second strap. Hook it over your right foot and straighten your right leg to the sky. So we come now to Supta Parangustasan 1. Your arms are stretched straight on the floor behind you, giving tension to the strap of the right leg. The left foot is still firmly pushing against the other strap, pulling the outside edge of your right hip towards your left foot. And with the arms straight, you can really start to feel an opening of the front trunk, of the front rib cage, of the front torso, of the armpits. So length is coming everywhere to the body, 
but in evenness. The straps are keeping things even. A certain awareness that allows the body to hold itself in a good alignment. Keep pushing, gently pulling, breathing. And then exhale, release the little loop strap. We're going to change the legs of the big loop. So the left thigh is going to be holding the strap in its inner groin. The right foot is pushing against the excess strap. And now you're going to take your second strap with the little loop already prepared. And you're going to hook it over your left foot and straighten the left leg to the sky. Supta Parangustasana, one on the left hand side. And sliding the hands down the strap so the arms are straight on the floor behind you. Now charge that left extended leg, try to straighten the knee completely, to broaden the back of the knee, to broaden the back of the thigh. Pull with the hand so there's a resistance in the strap against the foot and push the foot against the strap. And at the same time, remember that the action of the right foot is to continually push into the inner edge of the foot and the strap so that the outer left hip feels that pull to move towards the right foot. So the broadness of the lower back is being kept, even in Supta Parangustasana 1. Find the straightness of the arms linking to the length of the waists, the length of the waist linking to the opening of the front trunk. And then gently exhale and release. Unhook yourselves from both of the straps and place them by the side. So now we've had an experience of real evenness. Go ahead and stretch your left leg straight with the heel down, the toes facing up. Interlock your fingers around the front of the right knee. Ekapara, without the straps. And see if you can replicate now the movement that the strap would bring to the outer hip. The outer right hip wants to roll down towards the left foot as you bring the knee towards you. So let the memory of the strap on the cells, on the muscles, Direct the pose. Changing sides, extend your right leg straight, press the heel down, the toes up. And now bring your left knee towards you, interlock the fingers. Roll the shoulders back, feel the opening of the groin. Now find the outer left hip and make sure it's rolling down towards the right foot as if the strap was there directing it. Shoulders back, collarbones long, face soft. Staying in connection with the different sensations of the lower back and trying to keep that evenness, that broadness. And then exhaling and releasing. And now taking your strap, the one with the little loop in it, extending your left leg straight, putting the little loop around the right foot and finding Supta Parangustasana. Again, Create the memory of the strap that we were using to direct the energy of the outer hips in these poses. So find that right outer hip, and even as you draw the right leg towards you, roll the right outer hip towards the left foot, and feel the difference this makes in the stability and evenness of the lower back. Keep both legs straight, both feet charged. Press the left heel to the floor. Charge the right foot to the sky and push the quadricep muscle of the right leg away from you even as you draw the leg closer so the leg in this way becomes straighter. And then exhale and release. Changing sides, extending the right leg straight and bending the left knee. And then putting the strap on the left foot and straightening the left leg to Supta Parangustasana 1, the arms above the head. Find the straightness of the legs, find the charge of the legs. And now find the more subtle work, the memory of the last strap, which would be pulling the left outer hip, rolling it down towards the right foot, even as you bring the left leg towards you. Keep the legs stretched, the right heel pressed down firmly, the left foot charged and see if you can draw the leg closer, but make sure to move the quadricep muscle of that lifted leg away from you, even as you pull the leg towards you. So opposite directions, this keeps the legs straighter. The arms are stretched, the waist is long. And then gently exhale, 
release the strap and release the legs. So now we understand that Sukta Parangustasan has so much going on in it. So when you remove the straps, can you create the same sensations of the strap? And from here, coming to Dvi Para Sukta Paranamuktasan. The inner knees are touching, the inner feet are touching. A distinct feeling of symmetry between the left, between the right. And through the placing of external symmetry, we can begin to feel where we might be unsymmetrical where there might be tension, pain, or a particular holding on. Keep rolling the shoulders back so the chest stays clear and gently pressing the shoulder blades into the upper back to open the chest. And then exhale and release. Coming to some hip openers now, so place the outside edge of your right ankle on the front of your left thigh. Your right hand pushes the right inner knee away from you as your left hand draws the left bent leg towards you. So you should be able to feel the outside edge of your right hip, the right back, the entire outer right hip area, stretching, opening as you draw the leg towards you. Breathe, relax the abdomen, shoulders back. And then exhale and release. And now changing sides. So the left outer ankle on the front of your right thigh, place the left hand on the left inner knee as you pull the right leg towards you and feel the left hip begin to broaden. Keep rolling the outer left hip down towards the end of the mat. Shoulders back, breath steady, throat soft. Allowing the opening to penetrate before exhaling and releasing. And now we're going to come to another hip opener, so bring the feet off the floor and cross the right knee completely over the left knee. Then reach with your hands for the outside edges of your ankles and draw the feet, the calves, the ankles towards you. Keep the feet flexed and again feeling the broadness of the hip, the musculature being lengthened, being broadened. Roll the shoulders back, see if you can draw the outer ankles towards you more and more as the hips open. Stay in touch with the breath, with the breath moving through the areas of sensation, releasing, relaxing. And then uncross the legs and change sides. And now you bring your left knee over your right. And again, reaching for the shin, or if you can reach the outer ankle. Keep your feet flexed, keep pushing through the balls of the feet, spreading the toes, so the energy moves out of the hips all the way through the legs and out of the feet. Keep close connection to the sensations, the breath. Work the breath to create more clarity, more evenness in the body. Relax the face, relax the throat. Allow the freedom to gently come before releasing, uncrossing the legs and bringing the feet back to the floor. Feel the evenness in the hips. Extend the arms out to the side of the body so the hands are in line with the shoulders. And now coming to Jatara Parivatanasana, twists. So bringing the feet off the floor and rolling your knees over to the right. As you roll your knees over to the right, make sure the knees land quite high, close to the elbow, and gently begin to turn and gaze down the length of your left arm. Have a soft, smooth inhalation and a soft, smooth exhalation, using the exhale to roll to create more passiveness, more twistingness. And try to keep that alignment in the legs so the inner feet are still in touch with each other, the inner knees, and in this way, you can be sure that the hips are stacked properly on top of each other. And now, bringing the legs back up, preparing for the other side. Jatara Parivatanasana, simplified, twisting to the left. Make sure your knees are stacked, your feet are stacked. And then go ahead and turn and gaze down the length of the right arm. Each inhale, lengthening the front spine. Each exhale, pacifying, softening, so that more and more twistingness can occur in the trunk. Keep the collarbones long, the shoulders rolled back. And even here, the shoulder blades slightly pressing into the upper back to help op the, open the chest from the back body itself. Relaxed face, relaxed tongue. But keep the feet, the legs sharp and aware, the hips stacked on top of each other looking for that evenness, to move from evenness. And then bringing the legs back up. 
and placing the feet on the floor. And just allow yourselves to lie here a little bit, making sure that you feel the evenness of the hips, the left hip, the right hip, before rolling over to the right hand side and pushing yourselves up. So coming back to kneeling on our mats, but this time turning the toes under, we're going to stretch the feet a little bit. The feet play an important role in everything. We stand on them all day long, so as they get twisted and tight, this is going to snake up the body with time. So we want to stretch them, keep them broad and open and even. Bring the hands now behind the back, interlock the fingers together. Roll your front shoulders back and stretch the arms back. So the shoulders are opening at the same time, the chest is getting a lift. Deep inhalation, deep exhalation. Stretch and reach. Keep lifting the sternum to the sky. And then releasing to change the interlock. Having changed the interlock, again, roll the front shoulders back and begin to stretch the arms back behind you and feel the openness that's coming to the chest, to the rib cage, to the intercostal muscles. And your feet may be paining just a few more seconds. Allow the toes to stretch. And then exhale, release the hands. And now you can release the feet. And having released the feet, we're now going to stretch the inner arms. So turn your fingers, invert them so they face you. And move away enough that you can push into the heel of the hand down the length of your straight arms and really feel the inner arm opening and the heel of the hand opening and possibly the palm itself and the fingers also stretching. Keep the shoulders broad, keep extending down the arm, pushing firmly into the heels of the hands. And then exhale and release. So our next pose is going to be a standing Padigasan side stretch. So you're going to need a wall. So stand with the right side of your body, arms distance away from a wall, any wall, it doesn't matter. And having placed yourself with your feet touching, your inner knees touching, tuck your tailbone so your lumbar stays long. Stretch the left arm up and extend it over to meet the wall. And now you begin to feel the stretch coming down the left side of the body. You can move the bottom hand forward a little bit so that your bottom shoulder blade moves forward and your top shoulder blade moves back. In this way, the chest keeps opening to the sky. And then exhaling and releasing, changing sides. So now the left side of your body is facing the wall, arms distance away, feet together. Inhale the right arm up, tailbone tucks towards the pubic bone. And then exhale and over and find the wall with the right hand. You can move the bottom hand forward and the top hand slightly back to mirror the movement of the shoulder blades. The bottom shoulder blade is going forward, the top shoulder blade is going back. Push firmly into your feet and feel the stretch running along the entire right side of the body. Keep the buttocks tucked, the tailbone moving forward. And then exhale and release. So now coming back to our mats, we're going to come to a simplified Parivrita Pashva Konasan. So being in a lunging pose with your right knee directly over your right heel and your left hip directly over your left knee. Make sure your hips are facing forward. Now lift the arms up to the sky, stretch the waist. Bring the arms in front of you, palms together, and as you exhale, turn and twist to the right, pressing the outside edge of your left tricep against the outside edge of your right thigh. Keep the palms firm to create more and more twistingness. Roll the shoulders back. Each exhale creating more softness. Roll the left abdomen to the right, the left lung to the right. Face relaxed, head back. And then softly, gently exhale and release. So changing sides now. So your left leg is going to be forward, so you're twisting to the left on the second side. The knee just above the heel. The right hip just above the right knee. Then go ahead and inhale the arms up to the sky. Find that length again in the trunk, that length in the torso. Lift up out of the hips and the legs. Bring the hands in front of you. Press the palms firmly together and with the exhalation, turn and twist to the left. The right tricep pressing against the outside edge of your left thigh. Press the palms firmly to twist more, to twist more. Shoulders back. Use each exhale to soften the abdomen, to roll it, to twist it. The right abdomen rolling to the left. The right lung rolling to the left. Head back, face soft. And then 
gently. Exhale and release. Coming now to an Adho Mukha Svanasana. So place your hands at the front of the mat, shoulder width apart, spread the thumbs, the fingers, everything very widely. Lining the feet up with the hands, go ahead and push yourself away from your hands. Buttocks coming up to the sky, but keep the knees bent so that there's no tension on the hamstrings yet. So we're really just working into the shoulders, into the upper back. Once you've really been able to stretch the arms, then you can begin to straighten the legs and keep the heels lifted and the toes lifted at the same time. So this way you're really on the balls of the feet and with the heels lifted, you can lift the buttock bones higher and higher to the sky. Push the front thighs back firmly so the backs of the knees are broad, the backs of the thighs are broad. Push yourself away from the heels of the hands, stretching the waist, stretching the arms. And then exhale and release, bringing the knees down to the floor and coming to your mat. So for our next pose, we're going to need a block. If you need a little more height, you can take a blanket, fold it up, and put it on top of the block. So maybe have that handy if your hips are very tight. Now being on your hands and knees, cross your left knee completely behind your right, widen your feet apart. And now if you need a support, block, blanket, or higher, go ahead and place that support now underneath your buttocks. So your feet have been widened apart to make space for the support and for your hips but your knees stay stacked one on top of the other. So we're coming to Yoga Mudrasan in Gomukhasan 3. Now you're going to come forward in that Yoga Mudrasan action, moving bit by bit, keeping the arms stretched, keep walking the fingertips forward until slowly, gently, your chin will rest on your knee or come in that direction. And remember that when we think we're moving forward in yoga, we're also pushing back at the same time. We want to create these resistances that help give the pose a feeling of safety and that move it and stretch it in two directions so the line is not moving just in one direction. So keep stretching forward with the arms and gently pushing the buttocks back. Relax the groins, relax the abdomen. Observe the sides of the hip, the left hip, the right hip. And now inhaling up and you're going to turn and twist to the right. Parivrita Yokumudrasan in Gomukasan 3. So twist right across, stretch your left arm so you keep the feeling of length in the twist. The right elbow can bend so that the hand is on the floor to help push to twist more. And then slowly, gently inhaling up. Releasing, changing sides, so coming back onto the hands and knees, uncrossing your legs. And now crossing your right knee behind your left knee widening the feet apart and coming to sit on your support. If it was too painful, you can add height. If there was not enough sensation, you can release the support and be on the mat or on just one blanket. And then having found the base position, go ahead and come forward to Yoga Mudrasan. Walking the fingertips forward bit by bit, stretching the arms, keeping the shoulders broad. And keep using the exhale to release, to pacify, to broaden to create that smoothness, that evenness. Relax the face completely so there's a feeling of surrender to this moment. No pushing against it with the ego. Just releasing, resting there, observing, breathing, allowing the work to be done. Keep stretching forward through the fingertips as you push gently back through the buttocks. Relax the abdomen, the gut, the groins. And now coming back up so that you can twist this time to the left. So when you twist to the left, stretch your right arm forward so you keep the length of the spine through the arm. But the left elbow can bend so the left fingertips push on the floor to help you to turn and twist more effectively. Keep the breath even, the face relaxed. Try to deepen, try to push against the membrane, the edges. And then slowly, gently, coming back up and releasing. So the hips should feel really broad, open now. The knees, the feet, the toes even. Everything circulating properly, linking, lining up. And we're going to come into our final pose, our resting pose now. 
Vipariti Karani. Vipariti Karani is legs up against the wall, so we get the benefits of the inversion and the beauty of a Shavasana. So go ahead and take a blanket and fold the blanket in half. If you don't have a blanket, you can use your mat. It's just so your hips are comfortable. You're going to need a wall. Put your blanket or your mat right up against the wall. And then go ahead and come in sideways so you can get close to the wall. Sit on your mat, on your blanket, on your pillow, whatever you've put there. And then lie back and straighten the legs up against the wall. Now, if there's any pain in your hamstrings, move further away. You want to be able to relax as well. This is going to be your Shavasana, your resting pose also. So have a distance that permits you to be relaxed and to enjoy this. Make sure the hips are tucked in such a way that the anal mouth is facing the wall. This is keeping your lower back long. And allow your feet to be a little bit apart. Make sure you're right on the back of the skull. The shoulders are rolled back and the arms extended to the side. And when you found a place of comfort, gently allow the eyes to close and give yourselves at least three minutes here before rolling over and refinding your taste. This pose is amazing for the immune system. Even if you don't have time to practice, to do any poses during the day, I recommend lying with your feet up against the wall every day, no matter what's going on just allowing the system to restore, to regenerate, and the mind to cleanse. All is soft, all is resting. Namaste. Namaste.